Okay, I've got five o'clock, so I'll call the regular scheduled meeting of the Hartford City Council to order at this time. It's June 24th, 2021, it's 5 p.m. Uh, we'll have uh, the usual invocation. I, I would ask, first of all, that we just have a moment of silence in memory of uh, Jerry Scoggins and all the years that he's given to uh, Hartford. Uh, both serving on the council and also Beaver Dam, you know, is a member of their police force. So, uh, just in your uh, your momentary thoughts, just remember Francis and Corinne and the uh, difficult time they're going through, and then we'll have our invocation. Father, tonight we just come to you with thankful hearts that we've experienced today, but Father, we realize that um, Jerry did. And Father, we just pray that you'll be with Francis and Corinne as they deal with this loss in the coming days, Father. It's going to be a very difficult time for them. Just pray that you'll uh, be their strength and their help in their time of need. Pray, Father, for our meeting tonight. I'm so thankful we live in a free country where we can meet and carry on the business of our community. And just pray for guidance and just help us to always make decisions that's in the best interest of uh, the citizens of Hartford. We just thank you for your leadership and guidance in this issue. Pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we've got a, a visitor or two tonight, so. Uh, I'm going to recognize Ms. Shake first of all, and you can have the floor and just uh, introduce yourself and whatever you, whatever uh, you're selling, okay? <laughs> well, selling nothing. Uh, Joanna Shake, I am um, relatively new, the new executive director of the Green River Area Foundation. Then some of you have seen me already. I've uh, been in the job for about a year, but I don't really count it because of COVID. So I just feel like now that the world's opened up, I'm spending my summer going to all the city council meetings and just saying howdy. And to remind folks that grad's here to help, um, you know, a lot of the ARPA monies, Hunter Phillips at our office is a great uh, resource. He is in on every, gosh, um, training webinar. So a lot of our cities are relying on him. We have Jesse Howard of our staff, who is our public administration specialist. She helps. Um, with budget prep or tax rate calculation, any type of ordinance, if you need some research with that. Um, we've got a whole slew of great writers. Um, so if there's a project that you need some funding or need some help with, please feel free to holler at us. We are extended staff to the city. So um, you've got staff here, but you also have us in case you need some extra help with any, anything. That's just, um, so I'm just here to listen, see if there's anything that we can help with. But I appreciate the time. And Thanks for letting me be here. Thank you. She's also here to remind us that next week is our payment. <laughs> but, but it's money well spent. I'm thrilled to death with it. They are a great resource. We use them all the time. We get, time because we, we get more than our money's worth out of Ray, so we're help. thankful. Oh, thank you. They help us out a lot. We enjoy it. We're very thankful for all of the grad employees and their leadership. And it, uh, they, they helped me get my feet wet on some grant writing too, so uh, yeah. something that we could look into in the future. Here. Uh, Tim, I'm going to let you come when we have new business and talk, okay? okay. Do the rentals have anything you want to bring up? No, not at the moment. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks for coming. All right, we'll take a look at the minutes of our last meeting and uh, I'll let entertain a motion to adopt those minutes whenever you feel like you've sufficiently read through them, hopefully before you came in. Make the motion. All right, motion's made. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote all in favor of accepting those minutes. Thank you. Motion carried unanimously. Uh, Tara's not with us tonight. She left today to go to California for about a month to do her hiking out there on a trail. So we'll take a look at the financials and 
see if you have any questions about those. If you do, uh, once you've looked at them, if you have any questions, well, I'll entertain the motion first, and a second, and then we'll talk about any discussion that you've got. any golf cart permits at all? No. Oh, not that I know of. Maybe one. One. Council member felt bad he didn't have one on, so no, he's always had one. That's good, because I was going to mention you. <laughs> uh, a, lot I mean, people, all... <laughs> a lot of people don't know they're supposed to have one. You know. But then a lot of them don't care, you know, they take their chances. And well, and, and the kids that are driving them around. Oh, yeah. All the time. That's just <laughs> unreal. Dangerous. Up and down Union, Oakley Drive. Oh, they're all around. Oh, they're in East Hartford, too, just whizzing around. Like, <laughs> no, not today. All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion on the financial statements. Uh, All right, he makes a motion. I'll second. All right, now is there any discussion about any item on the financials that you have questions about or? Hearing none, then we'll proceed to vote. But all those in favor of accepting the financial statements, thank you, motion's carried. Uh, now come to old business. We have an ordinance on closing Cherry Alley. We talked about it last week. The ordinance has been written now. Uh, somebody read the, the uh, ordinance for the first reading. So. I can read it. All right. Uh, City Park for Kentucky Ordinance 2021-04, an ordinance to close a portion of Cherry Alley in an open right of way located between the between Beach Alley and Mulberry Street. All right, then we'll <laughs> take it up next month for the second reading of it. Uh, let's go to new business. Um, you've got a list of things there. I'm going to let Tim, if you want to come up and present uh, to the council. Hello. This is Tim Griffin. If you don't know, he's our fire chief. Yes. So. Okay. Uh, uh, first thing I want to remind y'all of, y'all don't know that uh, our annual hoses and hot rods came back this year. It's on July the 17th from 10 to 2, of course, it's here at the Courthouse Square. Yeah. It's going to be a pretty big event this year. Of course, it's unpredictable of how many cars we're going to get. But as of right now, I think we've got like 28 vendors is going to set up across the street. We've got four food trucks coming. It's going to be pretty big this year. I mean, it's going to be a really good, exciting time. So. Uh, I'd like to see all y'all there. Just check it out. It's pretty interesting. It's, 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 it's really again. July 17th. <coughs> all right, the main reason I'm here, our uh, truck payment on our newest truck, the 2009 Pierce, is coming close to an end, which is a good thing. Uh, but I know back in 2008, I couldn't find it in the minutes, but there was an agreement to where as soon as that truck was paid for, we can go ahead and purchase another new truck. Of course, I cannot find it in the minutes. Um, so, you know, all of our trucks are getting an age, and that needs to be, you know, starting to do something. We got our 80, our, yeah, the oldest one we got is an 84 ladder truck. It's been out of service three months. Cannot find parts for it. I've been on the phone all day long trying to find parts. Uh, that's something that we can't do for used trucks anymore. I just can't do that. Uh, so <clears throat> I would like to sell the two, not 2000, but the, the 98 International we've got down here. I could probably get 20. I looked them up today. They're running about 20 to $30,000 sale on used trucks. I would like to sell that one and purchase, put that towards the purchase of a new truck. Now, Grant, I'm not up here asking for money because that, the, those payments comes out of what we collect from the county money and the county dues that people pay. 
So last year, I think we averaged $55,000. And our yearly payment for the truck now is like $32,000. So we can make that payment, no problem. The thing of it is, from 2009 to now, everything's going up. I mean, I don't know how, what a truck's going to cost. I have no clue. Uh, so what I was <clears throat> looking for, so, you know, the money, like I said, the money's not coming out of the city. It's coming out of what we collect during the years. Uh, state aid, county dues, county money, stuff like that. Uh, but I would like to start, or you know, I asked the council meeting if we can start doing a bidding process, getting bidding, bidding packets together, get out bids to see what we can come up with. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, the trucks nowadays are so much safer. That's why I like to get rid of that uh, 98 down there. Um, all of our trucks now are cab workers, you know, custom cab, cab workers. All of our firemen, all of our members, we would rather drive that truck than an international down there because it's so much better. It's still, they're so much shorter. Uh, the international so long. We they put that truck in the ditch so many times to try and turn corners. It's just not a very safe truck, and it doesn't get used a whole lot. <coughs> nobody wants to drive it. Uh, so that's what we're trying to go after again is another custom cab. It's just more of a second out truck for brush fires yes. and such like that. Yeah, it's an empty um, truck. So the, if we do get a new truck. Of course, it'd be a frontline truck. It replaced the engine. Then the squad, the one that we're paying for, it'd be a second out truck along with the tanker truck. The, both trucks, all three trucks, is going to be used no matter what. Because there will be you know, What is left out. on squad? Huh? What's left on squad? Two pants, I believe. Oh, nine pairs. Yes. Yes. Two. So, you know, it takes a year. It, it'll, on the bidding process, I do know it takes up to two to three months. Then it takes a, another month or so to get the contract signed. Then it takes, I don't know, another two months to get the, bid, you know, get the specs right for the build. Then it takes over a year to actually build the truck. Then I think the first payment is due after, one year after the truck is delivered. So that's like three years, you know, that we've played with. I just like to get this going, get the ball rolling, and uh, so that way, when, it's, when that payment's done, we'll just roll it over to another payment, roll it over to another truck. <clears throat> so. The truck you're talking about selling, uh, can you tell them what kind of a history you've had with it as far as repairs or? Yeah, that, the pump on that truck has been rebuilt. I know of three times, but I can check with Danny and see. Uh, I think the last time when it was rebuilt is that after the Beaver Dam building supply. And what it is, I think Embry's and Bowling Green found the problem and corrected it. The pump was from the factory was set in at too much of a degree, and it was wearing the seals out. I was telling you about that it was yesterday, but I talked to Danny, but it was fixed. But the pump was set at a certain degree, and they got mechanical seals inside the pump, and the ceramic. So they were sitting like this, and it kept wearing the seals out. Um, as far as that, the steering box on that truck's been replaced. And um, brakes, brakes. As far as transmission, engine-wise, everything's been great on that. I don't. I wish I wrote down the miles on it, but I don't have it. And it served its purpose. I mean, I, me and him both that been around been there for what 15 years now. So I mean, I I, I see what he's saying. It I, would make a, a small agree. apartment a good truck. I don't know if you remember the old engine 13. It was a 80 something. Somebody drove down here away from Eastern Kentucky and bought that when we bought the new truck at last time. They gave like fifteen thousand dollars. I wouldn't get paid. <laughs> I mean, that's just that's just the way it is. But that international is a four door cab, which I, it's a uh, that's a plus. You know, all departments love the four doors for. Uh, and it's got the air pack brackets. Brackets and, for and, you know, fast response. Manpower. I think we could sell that truck at a good price. But you're not going to be able to sell it till you get the new one, right? We could. I mean, because like I said, it's never used. We, we actually do. Because you could move around a few others. As we get closer to you could that use that tanker thing. if you had to, couldn't you? Yeah, I the mean, tanker's the pump. Just tanker. for brush fires and such like that, it could respond yeah, we to sold, secondary. Uh, engine four or engine thirteen. It was a top kick GMC, I believe. Yeah. Before we even got the new truck, and we was fine with it. <clears throat> so. Anybody have any questions for him? Like I said, this is not. 
I'm not asking y'all for money because it's all coming out of what we collect ourselves. So. so how much is collected through the year's time, I guess I'm asking? like. I tried to figure out a while ago. Uh, the county, with the new station out there, they gave us more. I don't know the exact numbers right now, but I do know of last year, not counting state aid, uh, the dues was $33,000, Lisa. Mm -hmm. You're right at it. Yeah, we're and, and with the county money, I ended up, I think, somewhere between 50 and 50. And that's, that's yearly? That's yearly. Mm -hmm. That's not counting the donations, um, the, run, the billable runs that we bill out. I think we collected a pretty good chunk this year. Mm -hmm. So and what is the payment on the tr two payments left? How much is it a month? Or is it yearly? It's yearly and it does no advantage as far as paying it off. There's no discount or anything. It's thirty three thousand seven hundred and fourteen dollars. That's what's so right. you'll well not your next one will be due in next May. Yeah, we've already made the payment this year. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so next May would be the next to last payment and the next May would be the ending. And but we have already checked into that to see if we would be in advantage of paying it off and you can. Yeah, Oscar's just, just weird about that. Now it's just a like yearly payment. <laughs> Well, I'll entertain to you coming back and giving us bids. Um, just see where we're at. I mean, yeah, let's just see where we're at and uh, go from there. And like I said, you know, this I mean, is 2021. Um, Everything's went up. And I'm, I'm expecting. If the money's there and it's self sustained and we, it don't come out of our pockets, the city, I, I don't think it would be an issue. I mean, I don't know the financial side of it, but maybe I'm missing it, but. Um, Which I talked to Keith Puckett. And, he's a and we'll have to just look at the bids yeah. and go from there. So it's agreeable to give him permission to go ahead and seek. Just entertain to take, yeah. to take, motion. just look at the bids. Sure. So. I motion that. So you're making a motion for that? Yeah, I'll make a motion to, that we look, the entertain the Taking, his looking. proposal. Yeah, just I mean looking. he's he's got to put out the RFPs yeah. before yeah, he ever gets a bid. Yeah, just just put that on <laughs> out there, you know. So I'll be fine. Take bids. Yeah, we're going to accept. We're not. I want to yeah, accept bids. I yeah, guess I we have to run bids on. and all that. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it'd be. He gets ahead of him. That's right. Watch your pressure point. Three more discussions of this motion. I'll second. All right. If not, then I'll in favor of that. Thank you. Motion carried. Thank y'all. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate you. Right. Your time. Uh, yep. Appreciate what y'all do. <coughs> Absolutely. All right. Uh, next thing is uh, resolution 2021-02. Back your packet. We can act on this tonight. It's just a resolution. So somebody read that and then we can have a motion a second and discuss it i'll read it uh, the city of hartford resolution for adoption of the 2021 green river area development district hazard hazard mitigation plan update all right uh I entertain a motion to adopt this resolution and then we can discuss what it is and why we have to do it. I'll make a motion. Okay. And second over here, Mr. Coleman. All right. Do um, you want to speak to it or you want to let Joanna speak to it? <laughs> Joanna can. <laughs> uh, so instead of doing 34 separate hazard mitigation plans, uh, state contracts with Grant do one. Regional five year plan that's updated every five years that um, highlights projects, necessary projects for mitigation of any potential hazards. Um, but the, the real the most important thing is without this, we're not eligible for FEMA dollars. So you have to adopt this plan in order for um, to, to receive FEMA, plan to, or FEMA dollars in the future. So that's why this is so important. To but, get um, FEMA dollars? Yes, ma'am. So if we don't have this hazard mitigation plan in place and a disaster were to occur, the city would be ineligible for those funds. Wow. So um, 
slick edge of our grad team. We've been working on this for about the last year and a half um, to make sure that we do I feel like some folks, I know the mayor um, has set in on some committee meetings and Lou Lou has too. On you set in on some committee meetings? So, on the hazard mitigation plan, yeah. yeah. We had county level meetings. Yeah. So, again, um, it's a document that's probably, it's, it's, a, it's a big document. Uh, we're trying to go online, you know, uh, down the road some, but it has, its chief utility, of course, is to be eligible for the FEMA funds, but it's also a very proactive document that shows what mitigation projects that you have. And it helps us to identify those so we can go out and solicit those grant dollars projects for you. Where does this fall on the citizens and their flood insurance? Well, um, I don't, I, I'm sure it may have some type of, um, I don't think it's a direct we, correlation. We don't have very much of Hartford. It falls in a flood plain. You have to look at the flood plain map. Yeah. It's uh, just the lower portion I, down here, yeah. Centertown Road. and. And up to those around that edge of Harper yeah. Dare, it's the only thing it really falls in the floodplain. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, you have to look at the flood map. But as far as I guess your question is, would it help discount or help alleviate some of the expense for insurance? Or? Well, I mean, yeah, no, I had a friend in Owensboro, I think you all went through. All of a sudden, she gets noticed she's got to have flood insurance. That has nothing to do Even with though there's never been a flood right, in our I, area. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, those floodplain maps are revised every year, or not every year, every couple of years at the state level, and so that's separate. But this it. is to mitigate the floods. It's I mean, any, what's the connection? It's to mitigate any potential disaster. The tornado, fire, flood, um, but yeah, flood is captured in there. Too. Winter storms. So if you had a project, say in Park Road, see the street that flooded quite often, we can use that because it's captured in the document to go solicit funds and say, hey, our hazard mitigation plan highlights a project here and we need some help. Okay. Yes. So it's an inventory of potential hazards and what needs to be done. In case um, we have a review of 2009 ice storm, yes. we get those federal funds. We identified in Henderson, they, have, they, they needed to beef up their uh, sirens, their tornado sirens. It's just depends on each community what the what the needs are, but at least we know what they are now. We can <coughs> Anybody have any more questions? Okay. All those in favor of passing this mitigation plan resolution? All right. All those opposed? Motion carries. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, first readings, uh, reading of the ordinance 2021-03, the annual ABC regulatory fee. And uh, you want to speak to that? <laughs> yeah, we, I just got through completing the ABC training, and I learned that um, the city has to pass this ordinance every year. They want the citizens to be, even if there's no changes, and normally, I don't know of any other ordinance that requires this, um, but they want the ordinance to be passed, published like any other ordinance, so the citizens are made aware annually of what the regulatory fee amount is. Our amount is 5%, we're not in this ordinance, we're not changing it, uh, it is written, in a fashion that shows that it is just to establish the annual regulatory license fee. So again, we're not changing anything. Uh, and normally, you don't pass an ordinance and publish it if you're not making changes. But they said with uh, alcohol beverage control that they're going to require that. So <coughs> this is the first year that we've done this. <coughs> <coughs> Somebody give us a first reading of this ordinance. So moved. Okay. Well, I need somebody to read it first. Oh, I'm sorry. In ordinance I'm compliant about, with KRS 243.070 in Section 1, <coughs> Article 15F of Ordinance 2020-02, 
the alcohol beverage control ordinance to establish the annual alcohol regulatory license fee. Okay. At first reading. <coughs> At second reading next month. All right. <coughs> no. Anyway. Uh, next on here is uh, mini excavator quotes. There's been a uh, whole bunch of them right there. Um, there was some interest in acquiring a mini excavator <coughs> to be used by the water department and the maintenance department, uh, especially when we have to go on other people's property or something like this, it, it does less damage um, than uh, backhoe wood. It's easier to get in some places uh, and maneuver because it's much smaller than a backhoe and uh, does a, a much better job. It can do ditching with it, uh, whereas the backhoe is a little more cumbersome to operate. Uh, we went down and looked at Center Towns. A uh, mini backhoe, mini excavator, and um, I got some ideas from them. Uh, got quotes from different um, different companies on mini excavator. <clears throat> um, I forgot to request in to both Skylar and Hunter. They're they're asking for some clarification. But I think that uh, a court, or I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the uh, rescue plan funds will pay for this. Um, is that the CARES money itself, or is that? No, it's uh, the American Rescue Plan. Uh, we're going to get part of the money this year and part next year. And one of the things that can be spent for is water and sewer projects. And I'm hoping that they'll include equipment to do the water and sewer projects. We haven't got a clarification That'll on it yet. In August. Still. Will, will it be available in August or when? Will do that, what now? When will that be available? The money? Well, the money's, uh, either, they've said either the end of this month or the 1st of July is when they're expecting it to come down. We'll get half of it this year and half of it next year. And uh, of course, uh, we've got several projects planned for that money. Right. Um, whatever well, money we don't use, we have to give back. And that's uh, four years, right? Well, yeah, the um, the has, the projects have had to be planned within two years, and then and then the uh, funds have to be expended within the next four years. And if we haven't, then it money must be returned to the federal government. So. Anyway, I'm hoping that that would pay for it. Uh, we don't have to purchase it right now, but uh, you know, once the funds become available, if they come in that way, we can go ahead with the purchase, or we can use other funds to purchase the money. All right, how much are we talking about? Well, we've got quotes from Caterpillar, uh, John Deere, Case, and an off-branded case uh, has available. But anyway, uh, the Caterpillar was $55,091.70. The John Deere was $49,896.91. The case was $50,250. And the uh, Takeuchi was $47,800. And the recommendation from the uh, maintenance department was that we go with a name brand for parts and mm -hmm. maintenance and uh, mechanical repair. So the recommendation was to go with the John Deere at $49,896.91. And so uh, <clears throat> I would take a, a motion to accept the John Deere's quote on the price, uh, the stipulation being to pay for it, first of all, out of the ARPA money 
if that becomes available. If not, then it would come out of uh, occupational tax to purchase it. Of course, we'd have to purchase a trailer that would handle it. Uh, and we had some quotes there, but the uh, cheapest quote was from a company in Sykeston, Missouri at $5,822 for the trailer to, to uh, transport the mini excavator. We'll take care of the trailer later on, but there's no need to buy a trailer if you're not going to buy a mini excavator. When could this thing be delivered? Do they have them in stock or? Uh, they've got the, the John Deere is in stock on the lot. Um, and it could be delivered as soon as we pay for it. Um, do you have to receive your funds first before you make your purchase? Do I? Would you have to receive your American Rescue funds before you actually yes. make your purchase? Yes. We'd have to determine, first of all, if, if the funds can be expended for the mini excavator. And if not, then you'd have to be willing to say we take the money out of the occupational tax. If not, you know, if you don't want to, that's up, up, up to y'all. I make the motion that we accept the John Deere bid, provide it, we find out. Is that the ARPA? Yeah. Two of the biggest questions on the ARPA funding right now, one, can we buy equipment, and two, can we do debt service? Uh, so many people want to use it for debt service instead of starting a new project where they don't have the money, let's pay off the one that we have. So we've got our fingers crossed. We just, nobody can give us a definitive right. answer yet. So. We're all waiting for U.S. Treasury to, we'd like to have it writing, <laughs> just as a safeguard, but, um, yeah. So I think that's how I want to read if the, if Do the, what now? I think that's how I want my motion to reflect if that money comes available and it is provided for, for, equipment. That, for that equipment, that's, then I say we go through with the purchase. Okay. And if it doesn't come through? We'll, we'll just reevaluate it. Okay. I second it. All right. The second? Yeah. Okay. Tony did. Any more discussion regarding the motion? Okay. The motion is that we purchase the mini excavator with the ARPA funds if they are acceptable. And if not, then we'll relook at the purchase later on. Okay. All in favor of that motion? <coughs> motion carried. <coughs> Uh, next, you have street maintenance. Um, I've got two issues with street maintenance. <coughs> Hartford has mm -hmm. one street that's a gravel road. And it's Felty Lane up here. It goes up to the water tank, or it actually goes straight on back, but that's the, that's the lane we're talking about. Uh, and right, in, heavy rains, uh, the street washes. So we're always going in there and having to put more gravel. In the wintertime, uh, the sewer line becomes exposed and freezes up. And that becomes a headache for the property owner. There's one property owner for this. I'm not asking to pave it. What I'm asking to do is to apply what they'll do is they'll grade they'll shape and compact the existing stone and then they'll pave it with binder asphalt and compact it so basically it's like a chip and sales what it is and it's only going to the water tank no it's, it goes straight on back there's a house back there at the end of that lane oh but it goes back to that house yeah and stops okay yeah and it's the only it's the only gravel road and we've had a lot of maintenance problems with it and I'm just asking that we, that project is done by Asphalt Services and it's $4,990 for them to go ahead and do that. How much? How much? $4,990. And I'm just asking for permission to go ahead and do that project to improve the condition of that road. Now to come out of street improvements, MRA money? Um, Cam, that's where it had to come out of, right? 
doesn't have to, but <laughs> <laughs> but that money is available, you know. I'm just I'm kind of stingy with that <laughs> those funds because I, like right now I've got a bunch of projects to that have to be repaired where we have repaired water lines, you know, and we've given it time to settle, but now it needs to be patched and. I've got eight places like that in Hartford with a couple on standby, so, you know. But if you want to take that money out of the MRA, that's fine. We can do that, no problem at all. I motion that. I motion that. Okay. Take it out of there. I, it I want it only to go to that house because you're going to get a request to move it on. Do what now? You probably get a request. Once that part gets paved, to pave the rest of it. It's been brought up here before. Well, that's the end of that it house. I mean, the, house. the road ends at the house. Uh, not according to some of the residents on the other side of that hill. Now, I don't know. Well, I haven't it surveyed go, it, and I'm not going to. It doesn't go through. <coughs> we don't, we're on the gravel down to the house. I know you do. But they wanted it open all the way through. <coughs> Uh -huh. Railroad tracks, or whatever they call that, Emory Lane. Oh. No, I grew up on that's railroad up tracks. That's up at the next one here. Hmm? Ain't that up at the next? Yeah, that's where the railroad tracks was. Right off Iron Mountain. I thought where it comes up, up there by, yeah. Up closer Almost. to the uh -huh. farm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different road. Huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. But I was here when you requested it before. Well, I wanted to extend the felty lane and get it paved all the way through. So okay. I'm just I mean, it, it would have to come. The request would have to come before the council again. I know. I know. I'm just telling you. You're okay. ready. Uh, is there a guarantee on this work from Asphalt Services as to? the longevity of how long this kind of chip and seal thing Well, it's not going to be like a paved road, right. you know, but it's going to be, uh, it's going to last a lot longer than just plain gravel, you know. So um, how many years? I'd say it depends on traffic and a lot of and other said, conditions. And he, I don't know where this road's at. So I, I, right the right off going up the old water. Where the okay. Water tank okay. Now, where the hot water tank is? Okay. Okay. The cold ones in town, but <laughs> <laughs> not the not that one. The big water tank. The big water tank. The big water tank. <laughs> you said that you was having problems with the road. Yeah. Flooding. Water Washing comes down. off that hill. Washing down. Yeah. Water comes off Before that hill. Before we go done that, and this is an issue done. that I think is very important when we start doing these things, let's look at that road and see if it needs to be ditched before we apply anything. He's tried it, but it's still, there's enough water coming off that hill that a, di a ditch, right. you know, would still not be sufficient to hold all the water. Not even a tile anywhere remotely. I don't think so. That's a big hill, you know. Then if that's the case, then that stuff's probably going to wash itself out too, because all you got is rock and oak. Well, the binder will help hold the rock and gravel, to, you know, on, on there. It's just up to y'all. Okay. I think we ought to do it. Let's do it. You made the motion. <laughs> oh. Is there a oh. second? I'll, I'll second it. Uh oh, you going to? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Any other no. questions, discussion? No. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Um, <coughs> Okay, um, the second street maintenance is regarding Oakwood Drive. Uh, it's been probably eight or nine years since Oakwood Drive had any attention. attention. Uh, there are cracks in the road. They've been sealed before, but then they uh, deteriorate to extent. Uh, use by vehicles, cause it to wear, or whatever. And the cracks need to be resealed again. Um, 
So we have a bid from Allen's Asphalt Sealing and Striping to seal the cracks from 69 <coughs> down to Union Street and then to put in or to paint the center line again with uh, it'll have reflective glass in it you know to light up at night especially anyway uh, the bid for striping uh, and uh, to stripe the road was ten thousand dollars and to seal the cracks was fifteen thousand so it was for twenty five thousand dollars to do the ceiling and the striping for all of Oakwood Drive. That's what the bid was. So, that the only bid we got. I mean, well, there's not many companies around that will. I mean, he's the one that sealed Washington Street and behind the courthouse when we had um, the review over here in the community center that we <laughs> that we got. Got a lot of criticism about, but anyway, he's the one that did that ceiling there. You know, he says it's it's got a in the crack. <coughs> he said it's got a base there. It just needs to be filled up, otherwise the water will collect in the winter time and crack it some more. Huh? And crack it some more. So that goes from years if you know the highways, if you know highways, state highways are sealed like that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what? All the way from uh, Highway 69 to Union. From 69 all the way down to Union Street. Mm -hmm. East East Union. So just whatever your all's pleasure is regarding this, I'll entertain a motion or not. So it's up to you. I live on Oakwood Drive. Do I need to set this one out? What? I said I live on Oakwood Drive. Do I need to set this one out? No. No. I don't want to give any impropriety to get my road fixed. I think it's fine. Well, that's all right. We'll hold it. We'll hold it over your head. Don't okay. worry about it. Before I got here, my road got blacktop, and I was blamed for that. One, so. Stacia's on that council now. She's got Oakwood Drive fixed. I don't want to hear that around town. It's like, what? <laughs> It's on the record anyway that I put it out there. <laughs> you got yeah, we've only, we've only, it'll have, the money will have to come from somewhere else. We've only got 25000 in Municipal Road, MRA, and right so now. So you took, we just took 4000 You We took 5000 yeah. off of it. We just took 5000 So we can home if we use the rest of it. And I've got some passion to do, too, so it has come out of that. You got lots of problems, haven't you? <laughs> you got lots of problems, haven't you? You don't know the half of it. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee it. Well, I'll make the motion we fix you... Oakwood Drive. Okay. Second. All right. Second time. Discussion. You put it off till we get more money, you know, from MRA, because we'll we'll get some quarterly I, money. Can't, well, when did you plan on starting this? As soon as. Whenever you say so. <laughs> yep. What can we take the money from? Occupational tax. Yep. Well, let's take that twenty. It's infrastructure. It's part of the infrastructure. Yeah. <coughs> How much was the whole total? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. <coughs> Both projects, 30. 25 out of the occupational, occupational tax moved to the okay. road. Okay. MRA. Yeah. Is that part of my motion? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You going to second it again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any more discussion? Okay. <laughs> motion is to take the 25,000 out of MRA and and fulfill this quote here. All right, motion carries. All right, that's all the business that we've got listed. Has anybody got anything you want to bring up before I give you some information? Jeff sent me a text about Dewey Cruz's mess. 
ain't been cleaned up yet. Okay, we're doing it. Truck. We're doing it. Uh, we're doing it Monday. And they got a dump truck and stuff. So that's and Henry Doe Barn is still not picked up. That's yet. July the fourth when it's going to be tackled. <coughs> July the fourth holiday. That's the only time he had off to bring a piece of equipment in. So, so both of those are taken care out. of. Yeah. I hadn't heard from her. I either figured she's. Do what now? <laughs> I hadn't Henry? heard from Glenda for a while. I just wondered what happened. Well, I'm dealing with Robert. Bob. <clears throat> that's who I'm dealing Bob, with. Bob Henry. Oh. Yeah. He's the one that sure made July the 4th. So I said, okay, we'll give you to July the 4th. Mr. Cruz had to. I talked to him uh, a week ago. He had a, he had a contractor coming from Owensboro that was going to take care of it. But and I said, I'll give you a week. The dump truck sitting down there in the back, and uh, they got a track excavator sitting on this this side of it. Where's so the I guess they're going to clean it up. Okay. Well, right the boy lived there had a SUV sitting at the back side of the trailer. Been sitting there for. I don't know how long. Well, he moved it around to the front side where you got to go get to the jump, jump pile. <laughs> we can't get to it now. Yeah, we can. <laughs> we, we can move it. <laughs> I figured that was Grady Lewis' idea to move it. We can move it. <laughs> that was something, though. We didn't tear the ground down and leave the junk there. <clears throat> well, it couldn't look any worse than that on Clay Street, I tell you. You know, I had a problem over here behind Five Star Realty. They've got a courtyard back there. Well, the people in the apartments and Mr. Yost use that like it's common ground, you know. And be it's like me coming over to the side of your front lawn, look like a good place to have a picnic, and I just. <laughs> Sit down there and build me a fire, roast some hot dogs, and <laughs> have a big time on your property. You know, he just brings some extra goodies. <laughs> Mayor, I do have something real quick. Okay. Chris, do you care to explain what me and you talked about? Whatever you said, they would locate these lines and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes, there's a company that uh, can come and listen to every water line in the city. They will put a listening device on every single meter, every valve, and every fire hydrant. This company uh, in a small town relatively close to here has about double of everything we've got. They got double the meters, double fire hydrants, everything. Uh, roughly in the first 50 meters they listened to, they have found about 25 leaks. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's a couple other towns that used them, and it was relatively to the size of ours, and they found over 300 leaks that saved them thousands of dollars a year. Um, per, what is what is our water loss? Uh, we are losing about a hundred thousand a uh, month right now. Wow. What what was this company charging for this? Well, the, to come the, in that area. The, uh, the city that was uh, using it, the double of everything we got was around 19000 So I'd say around nine to 10000 roughly, guessing. I haven't checked on any prices yet with them. Or... In my opinion, and this is me alone, for losing 100000 gallon, I think we should look into this. Well, we got rid of a big part of the leak the one on Main Street was yeah. contributing to that pretty heavily. <clears throat> I mean, I <coughs> also uh, fixed the one up by the quick care. That helped out quite a bit. Also. Yeah. And there's probably stuff that yeah. hasn't yeah. surfaced stuff yet that we yeah. don't know. Yes. And that could be an issue. Well, I think there's one over here on Griffith Street we've had that's under. So. And it's not coming out anywhere on the ground, but we found. Well, when we were testing our system, mm -hmm. looking to buy the two different systems, found it within a foot of each other there. 
So you want to ask him to just look into see what they would charge okay. and come back and, okay. and bring it forward to us. If we can locate okay. these and get these fixed and get this hundred thousand gallon down, it'd be money saved. Mm -hmm. So. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Where's your water tank stand? Do what? Where's the water tank stand? Um, we're waiting until this ARPA money comes. You know, the, uh, it's already engineered. It's already shovel ready project. It's just waiting until the money comes down before we can. I thought we paid part of the money, haven't we? None? No, haven't uh. paid anything. I don't think we've even paid, we haven't paid anything near anything, have we? Uh, we did the mosquito spraying the 14th. Um, I think we got within a half a block of every house in Hartford. Um, and that's what about what the sprayer covers there. It took us a little over an hour to do it. But we did that on the 14th. <clears throat> and darn, I was listening to y'all and forgot what the other thing was I was going to bring up. <laughs> Don't get old. <laughs> well, it wasn't important, so I guess. I can't remember. If there's nothing else, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, second. Second. All in favor? A motion carried. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shake, for being here.